Hi y'all, bonjour, hola, my name is Trish. If you're new on this channel, welcome. We are so excited to have you join the community of learners. So for this lesson, I want to show you how you can cut out hair that is complicated and very intricate. So without much ado, let's get started. So with your image open, and as always, I will have this image in the description below so you can download and follow along. So the first thing that we are going to do is, as always, create a copy of this image. So to create a copy, you can do multiple, you can do it multiple ways. You can drag your image to the plus icon to make a duplicate, or you can click on your image, command J, it will make a duplicate for you. And then we are going to pick our quick selection tool and we are going to click on select subject. Now Photoshop quickly cuts out the subject for you, but you can still see that there are some areas that we need to clean up. So to include all of these little hair strands in our selection, we have to go to select and max and in this property, we will be able to add the rest of the hair that we are missing. So the first thing we're going to do on the property bar is you want to make sure that you are on the overlay. You want to also make sure that your opacity is at about 50%. And then with our radius, we're going to take it to 8 pixels. And then I'm going to pick my edge refining brush and I'm going to go ahead and clean up the areas that we want to include. Now, if you don't see your brush head, it means that your cup locks is on. So once you on click your cup locks on your keyboard, you will be able to see your brush head so you can begin to brush over. Now, if your brush head is too small, on your keyboard, you can use your left and right brackets. Your right brackets will make your brush head bigger. Your left bracket will make your brush head smaller. So depending on how big you want it, you can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to brush in this area. And then I'm going to also pick up in the little strands that we see. But before that, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the green that we see in the hair. I want to make sure I include every part of the hair. Now, this is the most tricky part when it comes to selecting hair, but you just have to do the best um, selection as possible. So with our hair completely selected, the other thing you want to do is that you want to make sure that decontaminate color is checked and you realize that it takes away all the grays and now you can actually see the hair color itself. And we want to also make sure that your output says new layer with layer map. You also want to make sure that your output says new layer with layer max and we are going to click OK. So you see that this technique really helps to cut out the hair. Now of course if you look at the hair you realize that it looks like it's much thinner towards there. Uh, it's much thinner in some areas but before we apply anything I want to add a background so we see how it looks under a new background so you want to click on your plus icon to add a new layer and with our paint bucket I already have a color that I've selected and I'm going to click and you realize that the color selection is really you realize that the hair cutout looks really good so looking at the image with the background you realize that 
This hair selection approach is a very good technique to use. Now, if I want to see the before and after, I'm going to hold down my Alt and click on my background image. So this is the before and this is the after. It looks really good. So before and after, a very good selection. So now I want to go ahead and bring in one background to replace this. So I'm going to click on this image that we have. I'm going to drag it and drop it into our file. And I'm going to rescale like this. And I'm going to go ahead and move it beneath our subject layer. So we have this look. And I like the way it is, but I want to create, I want to create a depth effect. So I want to, I want to blur out the background a little. So I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to keep my radius at 3.5. I'm going to click OK. So you can see the subject very sharp because the subject is right in front of you and you have the background. So what I'm going to do is to add a color lookup so that we can blend in our color very well with our background image. So I'm going to go to adjustment and pick color lookup. So to add the color lookup and make sure that it matches very well with our background, we want to first of all clip our color lookup to our subject file only so to do that you want to hold down your alt you realize that your mouse icon changes to a down arrow and that allows you to clip your image with the background image and all the changes you make will only affect the layer right beneath and everything else will stay the same so you want to click the line in between the two layers and it will clip it. Now we can apply our changes. So I'm going to change my color lookup to candlelight. And you realize that it gives it this cool and warm effect. And now we want to go to abstract and we want to light, we want to increase the, we want to decrease the lightness. So when you do that, you get this cool effect. So it makes your picture blend in well with your background as though you took those pictures together. So this brings us to the end of this lesson. Please like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell for all future uploads. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.